The year is 1939. It has been over two and a half years since the end of World War I in 1918, a war that left European countries in shambles, but none more so than the country of Germany. At the end of the war, the Treaty of Versailles essentially took Germany into a back alley and broke its political and economical legs, beating it within an inch of its life with no way to recover. With an economy and government in the toilet, much like today, Germans were angry and they needed someone to be angry at. It certainly didn't help that with a name like World War I, there was an inevitability that at least one sequel would happen, and that is what the world is about to experience. Local starving artist and ball of anger Adolf Hitler, who was slightly more angry than his fellow neighbors, quickly rose to political power. He was the leader of the National Socialist German Workers' Party, also known as Nazis. The Nazis were able to garner mass public support thanks to their ability to uphold the political tradition of blaming someone else for your problems. And like any modern Gen Z teen, the Nazis quickly blamed capitalism and big businesses. However, they quickly realized that capitalists had something that they needed. So instead, they fell back to their next best plan, complete racial eradication. Hitler believed that bad apples spoil the bunch, so he would just get rid of the bad apples. Except these apples weren't apples, but people. Jews, Slavs, Poles, cripples, bloodles, furries, gays, and worst of all, Jehovah's Witnesses. With them gone, Germany can be a pure society and get back to being a world superpower with all the bratwurst and beer that they could ever want. Many German people thought that this was an absolutely wonderful idea, and so Hitler was made Chancellor to Germany in 1933, where just a year later, he promoted himself to Supreme Leader with total and absolute power. And no one thought that this was a red flag at all. But there was still a problem. The Treaty of Versailles. Well, it turns out that Hitler could easily bypass the harsh terms of the treaty by flat out ignoring them. So he did. In a few short years, he secretly beefed up Germany with shiny new soldiers and tanks, but he quickly realized that he needed something stronger than guns or bombs. He needed friends. It didn't take long for Hitler's influence to go viral, reaching far beyond the freshly shrunken borders of Germany. His push for regaining power and territorial expansion convinced both Italy and Japan to do the exact same thing. Italy wanted land back that it had lost in World War I. Japan wanted to conquer more Asian territory without the disapproving gaze of Uncle Britain and Aunt America just across the way. Staying true to his word, Hitler began invading countries and taking them for himself. First on his list were Austria and Czechoslovakia, but why? Surprisingly, no other country seemed to really care much at all, probably because they were too busy trying to figure out what a Czechoslovakia even was. As a precaution to future aggression, Germany sent a friend request to the Soviet Union ultimate master leader man, Joseph Stalin, who not only had a bigger country, but a bigger mustache. They signed the German-Soviet non-aggression pact, which made Germany seem more intimidating on the world map having such a big friend on his side, even though his new friend was full of nothingness and snow. Hitler knew he could continue taking territories for himself with little opposition, so he continued to take land, but with much opposition. On September 1st, 1939, Germany invaded the Polish front, with the Soviet Union double-teaming the Polish behind shortly after. Now suddenly people care, and World War I II has officially begun. Stalin and the Soviets did a lot of the initial heavy lifting, invading a lot of the IA countries, while Germany fought the easier to pronounce ones. Hitler then pushed into France, taking many pictures with the Eiffel Tower before being rushed away by other tourists wishing to do the same. Germany now only had one more power to face, Great Britain. But there was a problem. In the confusion and chaos, Britain had dug a moat around itself, making a land invasion impossible. But Germany had another trick up its sleeve, skyboats. Germany began bombarding Britain from September 1940 all the way until May 1941, destroying countless fish and chip shops in the process. Britain eventually retaliated with its own fleet of skyboats and defeated Germany during the Battle of Britain. Britain was also being supplied by a long-distance relationship across the Atlantis Ocean, the United States of America. 
Germany continued its conquests of Eastern Europe, mowing down Greece and Yugoslavia in early 1941, furthering Hitler's goal of having enough landmass to create the perfect race, while simultaneously murdering everyone along the way. But Hitler soon realized that the world was not procedurally generated, so he would soon run out of land to take. Hitler began to gaze longingly at Stalin's large and throbbing landmass, wondering if he could just have a little bit for himself, to which Stalin promptly said, No. So broken was Hitler's heart that he devised a sinister plot to get what he wanted. Enter Operation Barbarossa. In one of the greatest anime betrayals of all time, Germany invaded the Soviet Union like a bunch of idiots. But surprisingly, Germany was moderately successful, reaching as close as 200 miles from the Russian capital of Moscow. If you've ever run 200 miles, you'd realize that that's not very close at all, and you'd also be very tired, much like the German soldiers. Despite being covered in snow and ice, Germans were surprised to discover that the Soviet Union was rather cold, particularly in the winter when things get cold. Thanks to their natural plus 50 frost resistance, the Soviets were able to push the Germans back, but now Germany found itself fighting two enemies at once, the British and the Soviets. But a new threat was waiting across the big water to the west, or east if you go far enough. While Europe was getting absolutely reamed, Japan had its own agenda, mainly trying to conquer China and the specific territories, specifically the Pacific. This was a huge no-no in the eyes of the United States, who wanted to first confirm if there was any oil worth taking. The US sent a letter to Japan stating that they will no longer trade with them. Japan, in return, decided to prank the United States by sending 360 planes to obliterate Pearl Harbor, a Hawaiian naval base. Unfortunately for Japan, the United States did not see the hidden camera just off to the side and immediately declared war. Germany then declared war on the United States, to which the United States had no choice but to declare double war on Germany. All hell was about to break loose. The Allied powers were completely speedrunning through the Pacific theater, island hopping all around between 1941 and 1943, hitting one gold split after another. They were going to take the World War II any percent record, and Japan was starting to sweat. Meanwhile, British and American forces had liberated the colonized Northern Africa, pushing into Italy and giving Mussolini the boot in July of 1943. But Germans were not so quick to give up at the spaghetti, so battles in Italy continued until 1945. The fighting pushed into Europe, with British, American, and even maple syrup soldiers storming the beaches of France on June 6, 1944, a day that will come to be known as Today, because of how nervous all of the soldiers were. With the Allied forces and the Soviets closing in on both sides, Hitler swiftly retired to his personal bunker to dine on a bullet with a glass of cyanide. With its supreme leader taking a supremely permanent nap, Germany had no choice but to surrender on May 8, 1945. Even as the sole remaining combatant, Japan continued to aggressively fight in the Pacific theater. United States President man Harry Truman wished someone would just drop a huge bomb on Japan, so he did. Twice and that was enough to end the war entirely. After the war, Germany was split and divided amongst the winners to prevent a World War II too. Any remaining Nazis were tried and executed, with some oddly having descendants in South America today. The United States briefly occupied Japan, sprinkling a hint of capitalism while dismantling their non-defensive military structure. Despite this, Japan prospered, but never forgot what America had done. In the coming years, Japan would unleash a secret weapon to exact their revenge and poison the rest of the world from within. 